muted so that we will have the sure. Thank you very much. I will kindly ask all to keep their microphones muted until the end of the uh, uh, of the session uh, until we open the session for uh, for questions at the at the end of uh, of Dr. Mona's speech. Okay, great. Okay, I think we we are about to be ready, Dr. Mona, Professor Mona. Sorry, oh, I am ready. All right. So, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'll start in Arabic just for two, three sentences, and then I will switch to English, as you all know. Bira'at Sayyid Ra'is Jami'at Baghdad, Ustad Dr. Munir Saadi Al-Muhtaram, Ra'is Jami'at Baghdad, and Amit Kuliyat Al-Adab in the area we have currently. He is a member of the English language in Kuliyat Al-Adab, Jami'at Baghdad, Ustad Dr. Munir Al-Alwan, رئيس قسم اللغة الإنجليزية الأسبق في كلية تربية البنات جامعة بغداد وأستاذ الأدب الإنجليزي في جامعات عراقية وعربية وعالمية لإلقاء المحاضرة الموسومة جون بودريارد The Gulf War did not take place and his theory of simulacra and simulation Just to give you a very simple view of who is Professor من العلوان I will share with you uh, just a second um alia i can't see it uh, just a second dr professor mona i will i will be with you i'm just uh, admitting some few people here okay all right i hope you are able to see yeah, yeah. all right so professor <laughs> professor mona alwan is briefly, briefly Alia, please. Of, okay. of course, I'm just admitting a few people, Professor Mona. Okay, sure. Uh, Professor Mona Alwan, uh, uh, the qualification is in front of you. She has more than 40 years of teaching in a wide spectrum of literature and language courses. Uh, her field of specialization is English literature, but her field, her, her field of interest extended to European literature, drama, culture studies, comparative studies, and several more. She has succeeded in, in so many various academic posts and positions, uh, and she has claimed excellence in all of them, supervised tens of uh, master and PhD studies, uh, published more than 50 articles and papers and book chapters, and then finally uh, she earned with excellence uh, several awards as the best teacher and the woman of her time, equally inside and outside Iraq. Today, uh, our uh, uh, our se session today, we will talk about uh, a subject that uh, she has been doing uh, quite a, a number of, of research, and uh, that's why she came up with the with the title, as you see it here, John Baudrillard: The Gulf War Did Not Take Place and his theory of simulacra and simulation. Professor Mona, uh, the floor is yours. Please go ahead. Okay. Awalan, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yisaid ni jiddan an akun ma'akum intu qism al-lugha al-Ingliziya, kuliyat al-adab, qism al-aziz, tkharrajit minna, wili rijaat la baad al-magister, wili rijaat la baad al-doktora, wili buqayt bi sanawat tawila qabil an al-tahq bi kuliyat tarbiya lil-banat. فسعيدة جدا بحضوري وياكم ومشكورين على كل الجهود اللي قدمتوها شكرا العميد الكلية الموقر شكرا إلى دكتورة سناء شكرا إلى دكتورة علياء لجهودها العظيمة في تقديم هذه الباور بوينت برزنتيشن the images we chose together uh, thank you so much I can't thank you enough so um, I will begin now with um, why I chose this topic, why I chose this topic. Uh, first of all, um, Jean Baudrillard is not really quite well known to Iraqi acad academics. I have noticed that. Uh, and very few uh, know about him or read about him. But that's not the real reason, actually. He's a very well-known 
French thinker of the postmodern period. He is um, a pro prolific writer, as we shall see. Um, um, what attracted me very much is his theory of the simulacra and simulation, which I found, in spite of the fact that it is very controversial sometimes, the ideas uh, may not be acceptable sometimes, but if you read it carefully, the basic ideas have so much truth in them, especially uh, in relation to our media controlled existence. We, we are living in, in a world of hyper reality where everything is, is, is given to us uh, in images. So we are kind of, um, um, uh, you know, mesmerized by the internet, by, by media, by, by the television, by films, by all kinds of things. So what I find in this theory, this is his famous theory, which he applied uh, to uh, actually so many things. I mean, his um, later writers were all very much influenced by this theory, and you, you find it there. So uh, almost, you know, like, for example, the Gulf War did not take place, which is a very provocative title. Um, um, and of course, the war did take place. But we, I want you to kind of understand his theory of... Uh, simulation and simulacra before we go to understand uh, what kind, uh, I mean, this kind of uh, uh, book, well, you know, very perplexing title. So um, I will begin now um, very slowly with you. All I need from you is, I mean, um, so as I said, his theory really applies to us. The book, um, The Gulf War Did Not Take Place, really speaks to us to our experience, the devastating experience of the war, of the Gulf War. So let's begin with his theory of simulacra. I, I will just probably read very quickly uh, what kind of man he is, and then we go, we uh, plunge into his theory. And all I need from you is um, attention, patience, uh, and concentration, because you may, at the beginning, you may find it really very perplexing, but then as the slides go on one by one, you will uh, see how the idea becomes clearer and clearer. So by the time we come to the Gulf War did not take place, I'm sure you will have a very good idea about uh, the, uh, you know, the theory of simulation and simulacra. So let's begin with John Baudrillard, who he is. John Baudrillard, who lived till 2007, was a French sociologist, philosopher, and cultural theorist whose work is most closely tied with post-structuralism and early post-modernism through which the idea of hyper-reality has been shaped. Okay, uh, so another one, Alia, please. His work combines uh, philosophy, social theory, and cultural metaphysics that reflects on key events and phenomena of the period. He's a sharp critic of contemporary society, culture, and thought, and is often seen as a major leader of a French postmodern theory. He was an extremely prolific author who published over 50 books and commented on very important, uh, you know, uh, phenomena, sociological and cultural phenomena of our, of our era, contemporary era. Now, um, his book, Simulacra and Simulation, um, I can, yes, thank you, Alia. The publication of his book, Simulacra and Simulation, in 1981 marked his first step toward theorizing the postmodern. It is a philosophical book in which the author seeks to examine the relationships between reality, symbols, and society, in particular, the significations and symbolism of culture and media, culture and media, keep these two words in mind, of culture and media involved in constructing, and this is also another important word, in constructing our understanding of, the ex of existence, our current existence. Okay. So now we come to the meaning of simulacra and simulation. It's uh, important to understand what is the meaning. Of course, if you look, at, look them up in the dictionary, the dictionary will give you, um, you know, like, okay, they are similar, but there is a difference in meaning, a little difference in meaning. 
for Baudrillard, he used both words interchangeably. He almost used them in the same way. So what's the meaning of simulacra? Simulacra is the plural Latin of the word simulacrum. Uh, so it's a meaning copy. Uh, so simulacra, as he defines it, are copies that depict things or that portray things that either had no original or that no longer have any original. So remember, I mean, it's the simulacra. This is the latest stage in the in human uh, uh, history uh, where the simulacra, the copies, uh, now do not represent an original anymore because they become the only reality or hyper reality. Okay, so uh, simulation, if you look it up in the dictionary, it's the act of replacing reality with fake representations. So it's almost the same, but he uses them. There is a difference, but he uses them interchangeably. So he gives so many examples to, um, uh, you know, illustrate this meaning of simulacra. I'll take Disneyland as an example. Okay. Um, Alia, yes, thank you. Disneyland uh, is presented, that's what he says, as imaginary in order to make us believe that the rest of America outside Disneyland is real. Whereas he thinks that um, in reality to Baudrillard, all of Los Angeles and all the America that surrounds Los Angeles are no longer real, but belong to the hyper-real. So uh, hyper-real order and to the order of simulation. It's no longer a question of false representations of reality, but of concealing the fact that reality is no longer there, that the real is no longer real. I know this is perplexing, maybe uh, a bit confusing, but uh, let us see how, how the idea develops and you surely have a clear uh, idea about it. Okay, so uh, Baudrillard is not merely suggesting that postmodern culture is artificial because the concept of artificiality still requires some sense of reality against which to recognize the artifice. His point is that we have lost all ability to make any distinction between nature and artifice. So there is nature and there is artifice in modern times, in here, in our contemporary modern era, the art, nature and artifice have become one with artifice actually uh, in the picture more than the reality of nature. So to clarify this point, he argues that there are three old orders of simulacra and um, he divides them historically. So in the first order of simulacra, which he associates with the pre-modern period, the image is a clear counterfeit of the real. So like uh, when we, for example, have a statue, we know that this statue is just a copy, a fake copy of a person or a thing. So the distinction between the image and uh, the real was still clear and uh, there was no problem. Okay, second, after that, in the second order, which he associates with the industrial revolution, of the 19th century, the distinctions between the image and the representation and the copy and the fake representation begin to break down. Why? Because of mass production and the proliferation of copies, multiplication of copies, mass production, copy, thousands of copies. Such productions misrepresent and masks an underlying reality by imitating it so well that it threatens to replace it. In other words, in the second stage, which is uh, a, what he calls you know, the uh, second order of simulacra, the, after the industrial revolution, the distinction between the real and the representation is a breaking down, breaking down. So um, the third order of simulacra, which he associates with the postmodern age, we are confronted, we are faced with what he calls procession of simulacra, from the verb to proceed, to go before, to appear before. So that is the representation proceeds and determines the real. 
okay? So if the present representation becomes, comes before the real and it, it actually determines the real, there is no longer any distinction. Excuse me, I haven't finished with this uh, third order. Yeah, thank you. There is no longer any distinction between reality and its representation. There is only the simulacrum, according to Baudrillard. When it comes to postmodern simulation and simulacra, it's no longer a question of imitation, nor duplication, nor even parody. It's a question of substituting the signs for of the real for the real. So we have now that the fake uh, representations, the copy, the replica is uh, the whole thing, and it actually substitutes the real. Okay. Next. Uh, sorry. Okay. The most common example uh, of this loss, he gives a beautiful example, a very metaphorical, symbolic example of the loss of the real in postmodern period. The most common example of this loss of distinction between reality and simulacra is media, media culture. Uh, so, um, okay, okay, so, um, yes, okay, so um, this media culture is really a key, a key uh, concept. Contemporary media, television, film, magazines, billboards, intranet, are concerned not with just relaying information or stories, but, notice this is extremely important and has truth in it, but with interpreting our most private selves for us, making us approach each other and the world through the lens of these media images. Isn't, isn't that true? I mean, look, I mean, we are so absorbed with media that media has come to interpret our private lives for us, making us approach each other and the world around us only through uh, the lens of media images. We therefore no longer because of goods because of real needs, but because of desires that are increasingly defined by commercials and commercialized images, which keep us at one step removed from the reality of the world around us. I want to give a comment here before we move to the other slide. What is meant by this? Which is so true today. Um, um, you know, um, um, Baudrillard uh, distinguishes between sign value of a thing and use value of a thing. So today, for example, we do not really buy... Okay, I'm just going to... Hello? Hello, Dr. Sanawiya, Chaini. You muted everybody, Alia. No, no, she's still muted. Dr. Mona, do you hear me? But she's muted. Please raise the mute from you, Dr. Mona. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry. I think you should repeat the last five minutes. The last two or three minutes, Dr. Mona, please. Yeah, please. Okay, uh, uh, everybody, please just keep your mics uh, muted, please. Thank okay. you very much. Take me back, Alia. Take me back. Uh, okay. So are we are we clear? Did did people hear about the third order of simulacra? Yes. Yes. The most common example, uh, Professor okay. Mona, from here. So the most common. Okay. Um. Uh, trying to explain how in in the uh, postmodern period. Uh, this idea of simulacra has become so predominant that reality has almost disappeared and we have what we call hyperreality. The most common example that he gives is media culture, which is so true to us. Uh, are, we, are we okay, Alia? Everything yes, is okay? Yes, okay. yes, Professor Mona, go ahead. So contemporary media like television, film, magazines, billboard, internet are concerned not with just telling us information or stories, but which is so true, but with interpreting our most private lives for us, making us approach each other and the world around us through the lens of these media images. Well, so let's read, I want to finish uh, this, uh, no, no, yeah, I want to finish this uh, slide uh, before, and I need to comment on it. I just want to, me to make this idea very clear. It's very important. Uh -huh. We therefore, 
no longer acquire goods because of real needs, but because of desires that are increasingly defined by commercials and commercialized images, which keep us removed from, uh, you know, uh, from reality. So uh, let me explain what is meant by this. Uh, today, this is so much so true today. Today, for example, um, uh, Hua um, Baudrillard uh, distinguishes between two things. When we go shopping, there are, do we buy things for their use value or do we buy them for sign value? Um, today, we no longer actually buy goods simply because we need them, but because of desires. And these desires are intensified by commercials, commercialized images. So we go and buy things that we don't really use, but because we love to buy them because we are tempted to buy them. So uh, the problem here becomes is that we are gradually removed from uh, you know, our reality, the realities of our bodies, the realities of the world around us. That is so true of our life. Okay, next. Baudrillard's early semiotic study found that today's consumer society exists as a large network of signs and symbols that need to be decoded. It is from this that he formed the basis for the work simulacra and simulation, which furthered this idea that our current society has replaced all reality and meaning with symbols and signs, and that the human experience is a simulation of reality. There are so many people who buy uh, you know, things simply because they are brands, simply because they are science, that would give them prestige, that would give them pleasure. So uh, this is exactly what is happening to us. The internet, the media culture has completely controlled our life. Next, please. Okay. Here Baudrillard, and again, he makes it clearer. This is uh, the image he gives is so beautiful, so great, and it really makes things uh, clear to you about the idea of simulation. Here Baudrillard recounts uh, a story that tells of imperial map makers. He recounts the story. It's not his creation. It's a story that is uh, by a South American, recounted by a South American writer, Borges, I think his name, George uh, Louis Borges. Um, so he takes this story and he thinks this is a great example. So he tells of imperial map makers who make a map so large and detailed that it covers the whole empire inch by inch, existing in one-to-one -one relationship with the territory underlying. It's a symbolic image, of course. So the map makers make this huge empire, the map, and they, it's like it covers every inch of the empire. It hides the reality of the empire behind it. It's a perfect replica. Notice it's a replica. It's not the empire. It's a replica. It's a copy. It's a representation of, of the empire. And, the, and so the citizens of the empire now take the map and leave the reality. They are so much enamored. They are so much, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know uh, attracted to the map that they take this simulacrum, this copy, they take it for the real empire. The map eventually, I, I am not done with it. All right, okay. Let's go. Yes. Uh, the map eventually begins to rot away and tatter, but the real territory underneath it has turned to a desert. And all that is left of the, is the frayed map as a simulacrum of reality. I think, and this idea that reality becomes a desert is going to be, uh, uh, you know, uh, repeated and explained in, in the following uh, uh, slides. Yes, so, okay. In our culture, Baudrillard argues that we take maps of reality television and film, and we think of them as more real than our actual lives. These simulacra of hyper-real copies precede our lives. They go before them in our attention. They go before our lives, such that our television friends may seem more alive to us than the real persons playing the character. Isn't that true? He also began 
studying how media affected our perception of reality and the world. Here he found that in a postmodern media-laden society, we encounter, we encounter the death of the real. The real becomes a desert, where one lives in a hyper-real realm by connecting more and more deeply with things like television sitcoms, television series, music videos, virtual reality games, or Disneyland, things that have come to simulate reality. These are not reality. Next, please. He argues that in a postmodern culture dominated by TV, films, the internet, and media, all that exists are simulations of reality, which aren't any more or less than real than the reality they simulate. As such, Baudrillard points to the process of simulation in which representation of things come to replace the things being represented. And that the representations and that the representation become more important than the real thing. The mass collection of these simulations, so many, so numerous, the mass collection of these simulations has resulted in the condition of what we call hyperreality, where we only experience prepared realities, such as, for example, edited war footage. I want you to keep um, um, this uh, phrase in your mind because that's what we are going to show in, uh, uh, you know, when we discuss um, the Gulf War did not take place. So, um, so this is the world of hyper-reality where we only experience prepared reality, prepared, edited for us, just as the edited war footage or reality TV. And the distinction between the real and simulations has collapsed. I wish, Alia, you could keep... Um, sorry, Alia, before you go to the next mm -hmm. slide. I, I wish you could keep... Um, uh, this, uh, rather than going back and forth to the small and, and, and you know, I wanted... Uh, okay. Hey, oh, thank, right. you. thank you. Yes. Okay, so, uh, as I said, uh, remember this edited for foot, uh, uh, war footage. Everything is edited for us. Everything is prepared for us. Or look at reality TV, for example. We are, what is reality TV? Um, uh, situations from real life uh, acted and reenacted in front of us. Thinking, making us think that this is reality. But, but it is still representation, no matter what they call it. It's still representation. And we come to believe that this is reality. Okay, so in here, the distinction between the real and the simulations has absolutely... Next, please. This is the hyper-real image that Alia chose, which, is, which I like very much. It shows, uh, you know, the streets full of all these billboards and images and, and all these uh, technological developments and everything. This is the world we live in. Yes, Alia. So, in addition to Baudrillard's postmodern universe, um, uh, 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 his, his postmodern universe is one of hyperreality, in which entertainment, information, communication technologies provide experiences more intense, more interesting, more involving than the scenes of common everyday life. I, people like it because. Uh, if they are bored with their existence, they find everything, all the kind of intense experiences, uh, involving experiences in media, as well as the codes and models that structure everyday life. May, everything may seem boring to us, ordinary, so we kind of, uh, uh, you know, get, go, go to, to the internet, to media, to kind of enjoy the intense experiences offered there. The realm of the hyper-real, that is, media simulations of reality, Disneyland, amusement parks, malls, consumer fantasy lands, TV sports, virtual reality, games, social networking sites, and other excursions into ideal worlds. Yes, the media gives us all these beautiful ideal worlds, and we just forget ourselves there. All this is more real than real to us, whereby the models, images, codes of the hyperreal come to control our thought and behavior. I find this absolutely true. Yes, Alia. 
So I would go back to the idea of the desert. You know, remember the map, which after a long time, it just tattered away. And then what they discovered that, that the, the empire, the real empire has turned into a desert. Here, what he says, in this postmodern world, individuals flee from the desert of the real. It's like as if our realities uh, are compared to deserts and we flee, we run away from it to media. So uh, the uh, individuals flee for the ecstasies of hyper-reality and the new world of computer media technological experience. In this situation, the subject, we as subjects, becomes a pure screen, a pure absorption and reabsorption surface of the influent network. It's a, it's a beautiful metaphor, a beautiful a symbolic uh, you know, uh, expression, is that we become like we are so much uh, uh, you know, mesmerized, magnetized by the internet that we become like a surface which keeps absorbing and reabsorbing, absorbing and reabsorbing to the degree that our, our, we just forget ourselves. In other words, notice this, in other words, an individual in a postmodern world becomes merely an entity influenced by media, technological experience, and the hyper real. That's what becomes to us. We become so much, we become. And what happens worse, Baudrillard claims that henceforth the masses seek spectacle and not meaning. They implode into a silent majority. I love this. They implode. You know, the, the verb to implode is opposite to explode. Explode is just going outside. Implode, implode is going inward. As you know, the more we can, for, with the more we forget ourselves in the world of fantasy, the more we implode and we become a silent majority, signifying the end of the social. Concrete face-to-face -face social relations recede as individuals disappear in worlds of simulation, media, computers, virtual reality itself. I mean, the best example for this is notice. I mean, when you gather with your family members, uh, you may say a few words at the beginning, get together, but then uh, you, you, you suddenly find everybody is having her or his cell phone and they are absolutely absent from the others. Really, this is the end of the social. And parents may complain sometimes when their children visit them and they, they're not really totally with them. So concrete face-to-face -face social relations really recede and uh, we become, uh, you know, we just disappear in the world of media and the world of simulation. Thank you. Next. Yes, I hope by this time you have uh, an idea about the meaning of simulacra and simulation. I do hope that you understand it now, at least basically. If you are really interested in this book, uh, it's there, by the way, it's free download, and you can have it on the internet. You can read it, read it very slowly, because sometimes it's really very perplexing, sometimes very confusing. But uh, what I have done, I've done my best to simplify the basic ideas in this book. Okay, so now we can go to the Gulf War did not take place. What is this provocative title? What uh, the Gulf War did take place? Why uh, does he put that title? The Gulf War did not take place is a collection of three short essays published in the French newspaper Liberation and the British uh, paper, The Guardian, between January and March 1990, at the time of the Gulf War. So uh, it's, it's, look, look at it, it's really funny. He was watching the war and the first, uh, the first phase, the first part, the first essay was before the war took place and when all the world was talking about it's going to take place, everybody is full of expectation, everybody is waiting for this war to come. So even at that time, he wrote this, the Gulf War will not take place. And he also published this. And then the second part, the second essay he wrote during the war, and he said the Gulf War is not really taking a place. And it was also published uh, same time in the newspapers. And then the third part, after the war was over, he insistently 
uh, believe that the Gulf War did not take place at all. And that, so the three essays finally were published uh, in a book uh, carrying the title, The Gulf War Did Not Take Place. Yes. So next, please. Okay. Yes, Alia, this is about the book that was published. Mm -hmm. I don't want to think. Okay. So let's go now to the um, Gulf War, um, uh, the meaning of, of the title and, and what he did and how he analyzed, how he proves that the Gulf War did not take place. And remember, you cannot really understand the book if you don't understand his theory of simulacrum and simulation. Contrary to the provocative title, the author, of course, knows that the events and violence of the Gulf War actually took place. But the issue is one of interpretation. His question is, were the events that took place comparable to, comparable to how they were presented by media? And could these events be called a war? That is really uh, the idea. Baudrillard argues that the Gulf War was not really a war but rather an atrocity, a calamity, a disaster, which masqueraded, look at the word masqueraded, simulated, okay, which masqueraded as a war, using overwhelming air power. The American military, for the most part, did not directly engage in combat with the Iraqi army, and they suffered very few casualties. And almost nothing was made known about Iraqi deaths, about the destruction of the infrastructure, about all the disasters that happened to us. The media did not cover this. Yes. Thus, the fighting did not really take place, according to Baudrillard, and also from the point of view of the West. Moreover, all the viewers, people who were watching TV, people who were, you know, excited, people who were kind of, uh, you know, uh, you know, I don't know how, how shall I say it, attracted to this, uh, to this, um, to these uh, horrible images, the fight, it was like, uh, to some people, it was an exciting experience. All the viewers got to know about the war was in the form of propaganda imagery. The closely watched media presentations made it possible to distinguish, made it impossible to distinguish between the experience of what really happened in the conflict in Iraq and its stylized, selective misrepresentation through simulacra. Notice the way stylized, selective, edited misrepresentation through simulacra. That's, that's the, the, the big idea. Yes. This is very interesting. To Baudrillard, what really took a place was not a war at all, but something else. The spectacle of a massacre. The spectacle. Notice it. It's the spectacle. It's like a theater. It's like something not real of a massacre, a spectacle of a massacre of the Iraqi people, of course, of, 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 of whatever we had before the war, or that the place, notice his comment on the place, or that the place that the war took for those who watched it on TV was an imaginary place. What do people know up till now? How much do people in the West know about Iraq itself? They know very, very little up till now, believe me. They still think, they still have these ideas, these Orientalist ideas about Arabs and about, you know, uh, about uh, the Middle East in general, uh, particularly about countries like us, okay? So uh, the people who watched it on TV, for them it was an imaginary place. Notice this, an Orientalist fantasy of mad, ignorant Arabs and imperial splendor. That's what Baudrillard thinks, that the whole thing was to the whole world, look at the imperial splendor, this imperial power, and look at those mad Arabs, ignorant, barbaric. Who cares for them? The war took the space of the viewers' televisuals, imaginations. That was not reality. Next. Okay. Baudrillard's rejection of the historical status of this war is shown to be 
a highly moral reaction to the pointlessness and the fraud of the Gulf War. Uh, you know, he was criticized um, by some uh, critics, Western critics, saying that he only cared for uh, the, the media images and, the, and whether or not the media images were reality, and he didn't really care for anything else, not for the Iraqi people who were destroyed or whatever. But I think his book, and, and I believe his book has, if you read his book, you, you indirectly, of course, get this moral reaction to the pointlessness and the fraud the, the, we, we were cheated uh, of this Gulf War. His opinion stresses the fact that the war was conducted as a media spectacle, rehearsed as war game. It was then enacted for the viewing public as a simulation, a news event with its tools of embedded journalists, those journalists, you know, embedded journalists, those who go to the, uh, uh, you know, fight site. And uh, uh, missile high view video cameras, it was like a video game for them. The real violence done to the Iraqis was thoroughly overwritten and overlooked by the electronic narrative. Notice this, it's an electronic narrative, it's a narrative. It's not reality, it's a simulation. Next, Alia, please. As the war threatened to erupt, and finally did, its events and possible meanings were released by the CNN and other American, uh, of course, uh, sites, which Americans have come particularly more, of course, the CNN was in charge of all this. And the CNN, Americans have come to trust as responsible and impartial. They really have great faith in CNN. They think it is impartial and responsible, but of course the truth shows that they, are, they were not impartial. For Americans and those receiving American broadcasts abroad, the video, the video images were the war itself. Of course, people, how do they know? So all the video images presented by the CNN were the war itself. As the war continued, however, CNN's coverage deteriorated into the broadcasting of press briefings, file tapes, carefully screened, carefully edited, by the Pentagon and the White House. Continue, please. Finally, according to Baudrillard, war in any conventional or modern sense of the term was neither the aim nor the outcome of the American action in Iraq. Of course, they did not care about Iraq. It was like, really, it was like really showing off their power. The aim of the action, says Baudrillard, was to strengthen the appearance of American power. The American military political machine chose an adversary, an enemy, much weaker in military capacity and held it hostage. The real battle, Baudrillard suggests, was not for any change in Iraqi policy, but for the perpetuation of America's international image. So, of course, uh, it wasn't for any change in, in our policy, even if our policy was faulty, it was foolish, but uh, this, what they did was not actually to liberate Iraq and to create a change. That is, of course, definitely known to everybody nowadays. To sum up, Baudrillard's final analysis, the so-called Gulf War was fought with, um, with, for, was fought both for the sake of image and with image. Yeah, I mean, the whole thing was just um, a, a series of images to glorify the power, and it is presented as images as well, not the reality. It was simply a virtual war. Yes, it was like a virtual war, a simulation. I end my presentation with the word simulation because it was all, it's all about simulation and simulacra. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for your patience. Thank you so much. And here are a list of uh, selected reading and the download of the Gulf War did not take place and simulation and simulacra for your attention. Thank you so much, Dr. Mona, Professor Mona. And uh, I will be back to the, uh, to the audience right now. If anyone would like to have a question, you can raise your hands and we can allow people to uh, 
direct question directly to Professor Mana, and she will be uh, more than happy to answer, I'm sure of that. Mr. Thamer Zubaidi, or Dr. Thamer Zubaidi, please go ahead. Mr. Thamer? Well, thank you, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Alia. And uh, thank you so much, Dr. Uh, Professor Munal Alwan, for this insightful lecture or session. Well, I really like what you are doing now because I am working on, uh, on a, a, a short story in Baghdad Noir, and it is, it, is, it is talking about the same, the atrocity of the war. But, you know, if we compare this, what you have introduced here, to, because we have the official story and the other story. We have the Pentagon and the White House story and also the other story. We can compare this to what we have in Hamlet, the official story. We said that the king was stung by a snake and then the real story. Mm -hmm. Well, I would like to uh, talk about a movie that I, I watched. It was called The Death, or the title of that movie, The Death of a President. And it talks about the murder of George Bush, the junior. Of course, we know that he didn't, he was not killed, but that movie was drawing attention or casting light on the, how the CIA works when, when something happened in America. And it shows that the first persons who are going to be targeted for everything, let us say, in a neighborhood, in an office, is that they are going to select uh, people according to their names. In that movie, they search for, do, do we have in that place uh, from which the bullets were shot, who are Muslims, who have Arabic names, and so on. So, my question is that, to what extent simulacra and simulation can be used to comment on reality, to refer to reality, the hidden reality, which is not seen by, by people, or which is not broadcasted by the, of course, by the CNN, or the Pentagon, or the White House? or those who are controlling media. And uh, thank you so much. That is really very difficult um, uh, uh, to kind of uh, do uh, because the Americans usually, if we're talking about the Americans, they really don't see, um, you know, um, a broadcast outside America. So all they have is the CNN, Fox News and many other uh, you know, uh, uh, channels. So, um, um, uh, but you can, you can, uh, referring to uh, our real experience of the war, and for Baudrillard and many other writers, by the way, have written about uh, this uh, fake representation of, of the war. It is, it is definitely edited, and it is definitely done as, uh, as a war game or video, video, whatever it's called. So there are a lot of writers who have uh, commented on this. Uh, but um, uh, what attracted my attention is um, uh, the, the book that uh, 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 Baudrillard uh, wrote. And that's why I had to explain the idea of simulation and simulacra. So you can use the same, the theory itself uh, of, of Baudrillard and apply it uh, to, uh, to uh, if you are analyzing the idea. It, it's, it's a very useful reference for you. And also, I, I recommend that you see his other writings because he wrote so many. You can just uh, Google him. You will find so much about him. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Thamer and uh, Professor Mona. We have a question from Dr. Haytham. Dr. Haytham, you raised your hand and then... Yes, yes, I did. Thank you very much. You Please hear me? go ahead. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Go ahead, Dr. Uh, actually, such a nice opportunity to uh, listen to Professor Munal Alwan after this a long time, actually, of uh, missing such a, a very significant voice. Thank you. Um, thank you very much for this. And actually, the war on Iraq uh, is based on a bundle of lies. Uh, with the advent of the postmodernist uh, culture and the digital age, reality has uh, actually given a place to many realities that are uh, actually fake realities. Reality is now manufactured. 
It's true. Made up. True. Uh, actually, so the war by itself, the, the, the war by itself was uh, 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 circulated uh, presented and represented through the media before it is actually start so with the uh, September 11 and what happened in the beginning of the 21st uh, century this epoch making event that changed the history of the world witnessed the start of introducing the war against Iraq yeah. And uh, uh, Iraq, if you ask, you are there in the States of America, Professor Mona, and uh, the majority of the people, those who are not educated enough, they consider Iraqis as the enemy, not, not as, as the other, but the enemy. And I have been engaged in the last decade in such studies related to the attitude of Iraqi literature towards the invasion, the US invasion of 2003 to Iraq. And uh, I have read so many works and books and uh, questionnaires uh, made with the uh, US citizens who consider us, who consider Iraqis as being the enemy. So we have no enmity at all with them. This is because this is because the propaganda of war worked systematically for several years to present and to propagate war and to win the war in the media before it actually started. So thank you very much for raising us an important, uh, this is a comment rather than a question. Thank you very much for uh, raising such an important and relevant issue to our life and to our uh, existence. Thank you, Professor Muna, and thanks for uh, the host, and thanks uh, for, for everybody who, who uh, actually was generous enough to make us part of this uh, uh, very important presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Haytham. I, uh, I just want to, uh, to uh, give a little comment on, on what you said. Absolutely, what you said is true. But you know what? Today, um, I was talking to a friend, Dr. Hadil Abdel Hamid, and we were discussing um, uh, this. Uh, uh, George Bush said something. He said, uh, like, uh, uh, I mean, it's quoted. This is a quotation that I read somewhere. He said that um, all this uh, Gulf War is a kind of... Um, uh, 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 it's, it's an opportunity to offer healing for uh, the Americans uh, because they suffer from the Vietnam syndrome. So there is, they failed in Vietnam and this was probably designed, I don't know uh, 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 how much this is true or not, but this was really designed as if it was designed to show, to give, to reassure the Americans that we are still uh, number one power in the world. Um, uh, but I, I, Dr. Hadin told me that um, uh, there is an, an Iraqi student who is living in Boston or somewhere who is doing his PhD, and he is um, 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 writing about a new syndrome for the American, which will be called the Iraqi syndrome, because all the world now knows that they have failed in Iraq. All the world knows, even the Americans themselves. Uh, yes, maybe uh, many Americans are not educated and that that's, they don't know much about reality. But there are a lot of enlightened Americans who know the facts and they write about it. And oh, there are so, there are so much in the internet about this issue. Thank you, Dr. Haytham. Thank you, uh, Dr. Haytham. Thanks, Dr. Mona. Uh, but I will go to uh, Miss or Mrs. Sahar Salem. She raised her hand for a long time. Yes, thank you. Well, um, first of all, I would like to thank um, Dr. Mona. Thank you very much. Um, I was a student in uh, Col College of Education for Women, and right now I'm studying master's in English literature for uh, in Ibn Arush. And I'm really grateful um, to get this chance to um, to listen your amazing information. Um, so my question is this: I recently read a novel which is, I'm pretty sure that um, most of you have heard of this novel, which is Ready Player One by Ernest Klein, which mm -hmm. uh, proposed or uh, project um, the future for, a hu for humans in general, where the entire future disappears and all people live inside a simulation. 
Um, and my question is this, in the current situation with the increasing influence of social media, can we, how can we protect ourselves from being subjected to this simulation? How can we live in the real world away from all of these influences from simulation, which is something that is getting harder day by day? Um, I'm, it's real, I'm really interested to hear um, your point of view or your advice in general. Yes, thank you so much for this opportunity. Uh, honestly, my dear, I don't think I can offer any advice because this is really, it has become so common, so predominant. It's really the internet and the media is, is really controlling our lives. And how could, how could pull people away from this? I think uh, I would go back to what Baudrillard says, that if you remove this, if you remove the map, there is a desert behind it. I mean, people, I don't think people are ready to give up all this and go back back to normal, to I mean, to the original reality or whatever reality of our existence. It's very difficult, especially for the younger generations. Absolutely. They have been brought up in this world of simulations. They live in it. They are attracted by it. They are mesmerized by it. So I don't think um, I'm not the one to offer any advice. I'm so sorry to say that. Um, um, we, we try to kind of make we try to, to make meaning of our life. We try to kind of make our life more social. Uh, we try to come to go back in contact with reality, but it all depends on individual efforts now. And it's really, it's really difficult. Thank you. Keep, keep on trying, Sahara, and good luck in your studies. Uh, Dr. Adra, you raised your hand and then uh, lowered it down. Did you change my, your mind or, you, or do you want to ask uh. something? Hello, hello everyone. Hello, Dr. Monalo. No, I didn't change one, but I wanted to give a chance to, to, to the speakers to finish their questions and then to Dr. It's, Monalo to, to answer. It's your turn if you like to ask, please. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Alia. Dr. Mona, it's, it's always a pleasure to listen to you. It's, it's, um, it's amazing to listen to this um, description uh, of war as simulation. And um, I couldn't help but remember how much we contribute to this because I can't um, help remembering the words of, uh, of the writer of the Cruelty and Silence when he described the bombs shells on Baghdad as the rain on his heart and, and how this image um, gave hope to people that what, what's coming or what's happening is this, this, it's a dramatic or film change for Iraqi people and of course it turned out uh, to the opposite, but I, I was um, curious if if the writer himself offered any um, conclusion. I I mean he he gave us this um, description of war as simulation, but did he offer any uh, conclusion or description uh, about how this could be fixed uh, in the media, or is it up to us? I mean. Um, it's like the Artenia, uh, uh, um, uh, orientalism and the occidentalism discussion. Is it, could we change this? Is it up to us or is it still up to the West to change this image? Um, I'm just curious if he offered any um, perspective to this. Uh, oh, no. Thank you, Adra. Thank you. This is a very good question, whether we can do something. Yes, uh, it's not the West. Uh, that 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 will change if we don't change ourselves. So um, yes, it all depends. It's it's on our shoulders. It's a big, huge responsibility that we should do what we can. I mean, we have to have to have our own propaganda. We have to kind of work hard to change what we what we actually. It's it's so difficult now. Look at our world. Look at the Middle East in general. It's chaotic. It's awful. Everything everything is really kind kind of um, looks as if it's hopeless. But um, as long as there are people, enlightened people, who can really work hard and do and contribute, we should never lose hope. I mean, yes, it's, it's us who would change. It's us who should do something and not, uh, not the, we, we should not expect the West to say, yes, the, 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 you know, these people are good or what. No, it's absolutely our responsibility. And I have great faith in you guys, you, the enlightened, the enlightened elite of our society, all the creative writers, all the uh, academics, all the good people uh, who work in, in every walk of life in Iraq. We 
can all do something. I mean, notice all these, uh, the protests that happened. This is really a step. Actually, the protests, the, uh, you know, Tishreen protests that happened, all this, it, it is like a revolution. It's like changing our image in the eyes of the world. It did. It did really improve the image so much. Nowadays, for example, when Trump says, uh, who are the Iraqi peoples? Are there people in Iraq? That was before the protest. Now, I don't think he can say that anymore. So yes, um, it is on our shoulders. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Now we will, we will go to uh, Mrs. Kawakib Talib. Go ahead, please. Yes, good evening. Uh, can, can, I, can, I, can, I ask, can I ask everybody to please keep your comments and questions quite brief so that we can allow more people to ask and communicate their ideas. Thank you so much. Okay, yes. Good uh, evening and welcome, Dr. Mona. And nice to see you. And uh, I want to say something about your subject. It's really one of the interesting subjects nowadays for uh, uh, scholars and researchers, in, uh, especially in political theater, in post colonialism studies, because now it's a new, uh, a new way to look to the uh, first Gulf War or second Gulf War. Second Gulf I am really specialized with the political theater. I, my, my PhD is about Second Gulf War and the First Gulf War. If we look at to the, uh, for example, in theater, the main source for the American play writers uh, writing uh, their uh, plays is media. And your, uh, the theory of Jim Butler here, uh, there are, we have uh, another uh, uh, philosopher, it's uh, Althusser. If uh, I can find a connection between Althusser and the theory of Jim Butler, it's about ideology. One of the American ideology is the using of the uh, media and especially the famous channels for uh, America, like Fox News, CNN, because these um, channels are used very well, in especially uh, to cover the image from the war. Therefore, is part of the American policy uh, and Bush administration at that time, how to, uh, to to look to the image of the war. Therefore, uh, up to now, no, I uh, remember sorry. the famous word for... Uh, Kawakib is yes. very listening to yes. you and your PhD project. But what's exactly your question? Can you just be direct, please? Because Yes. Uh, my, my question, how we can... How, uh, uh, you can, uh, as a researcher, we can apply this theory uh, on plays, novel, films, or movies. You uh, do you, uh, absolutely yes. You can, you can, and this is a theory. Uh, I I recommend that you read the book of simulation and simulacra, and read also the book. Uh, the both of them are, by the way, I I just uh, selected for you for, uh, um, some sites which offer free download. You also read the the Gulf War did not take place, and then from there you will go. You will find. Um, uh, a lot to talk about and to apply. Definitely, any theory could be applicable to to literature in general. Thank you, Kawakib. Thank Thanks. you so much, uh, uh, Dr. Mona. Uh, okay. We will move to Professor Anam. Please go ahead, Professor Anam. Thank you, Dr. Adra. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Mona, for this interesting, uh, uh, highly important lecture very well prepared and to the point actually uh, i'm very grateful to you now because you gave me a lot within very within a relatively short time thank you very much you're welcome my question this is uh, uh, question one do you think uh, dr muna that uh, Jean Bourdieu's theory is uh, related in uh, any way to the Western gaze? And 
question number two, uh, did he uh, mention in the book, in his book, did he mention any suggestion or uh, did he give any uh, perspective about uh, related to other solution or um, as, uh, yes, as a solution to this uh, problem of uh, media culture and its dangerous uh, percussions. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. I think this is the same question asked by Dr. Alia, and I just, uh, sorry, I forgot to answer it. No, um, he doesn't give any solutions. He doesn't. He just gives his theory and he gives his opinions. He does not give any solutions. He's just, it's like a warning of what is happening to us in the world. As to your um, other question about the Western gaze, uh, definitely, you know, the Orientalist studies about the Western gaze, uh, definitely, it's definitely based on simulations and definitely um, it's all prepared and edited and uh, they, definitely they have, I mean, this, this has uh, political um, uh, dimensions, definitely. So, um, um, yes, it is related, definitely, in one way or another. And uh, again, I, I really recommend that if you really have time, and I know you have time and you find time, you're a wonderful scholar, and uh, I know you have time, you, I, I feel like you will go to the theory and read it, and you will go to the Gulf War did not take place and read it, and then you will understand his position better. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Anam. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Uh, moving to uh, Mr. Haider Jabber, please go ahead. Mr. Haider. Okay. Um, Mrs. or Ms. Iman Latif. Iman? I think maybe the time yeah. has, yes. you know. Hello, no, doctor. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, just to, uh, 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 I don't know, to draw your attention, Mrs. Ishra, uh, your cam is on. Uh, I don't know if you, uh, if you put it on or do you want to switch it off? I don't know. You look beautiful, by the way. <laughs> Go, Ms. Uh, Iman. <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mona. Hello. It's so nice to see you. And uh, such a wonderful, exciting, very, very amazing lecture. Thank you so much. Well, I um, actually, I won't take long. Uh, just a short comment uh, that I'd like to make. Um, you were right, completely right, doctor, in saying that, uh, I mean, the fact that I would like to say, aren't we all living nowadays in a, this big bubble of simulation? We are all experiencing nowadays the um, this yeah, the, the 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 real the, the real simulation that Odiard actually said, which we were living during this pandemic, right? I think everything has been planned or pre-planned for us. Uh, everything has been enacted, uh, even I mean, like the 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 virus, the COVID nineteen. I do believe it's been created. I don't know about the, the rest of the <laughs> would I say. I would say created. It's been created. It's been, we've, we've been led. This, this is very, very big. Uh, it's very special. Right. We've been led by, by those big corporations, big businesses that actually would like to benefit, to have some, a lot of benefit for themselves. So, so I, it's just a, this, this yeah. is a this, this is like to opinion, of course. Yes, definitely. Yeah. You, you have the right to have your opinion about this. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so, so much. Thank you're you. Welcome. You're welcome. Thank you, Ms. Iman. We'll go to uh, Dr. Sana. You had a you have a question, Dr. Sana. It's not a question. It's a sort of command. Uh, of when I was so doing, uh, when I was doing my PhD, I I went back to the nineteen. Uh, 79 and earlier, uh, the problem of, of Afghanistan and uh, uh, the uh, <clears throat> invasion by America and all that problem in the Middle East that started Al Qaeda and everything. And I found out that it started with movies. 
Uh, I mean, a movie like Rambo and other movies telling us about the hero, the American hero who's going to save the world, and especially those problems that always occur, terrorism that occurs only in the Middle East, and it continued till the uh, Lord of the Rings and uh, the final scene when the Lord is destroyed, when Aragorn says, "Men of the West, it's time to to save everybody," and he, um, uh, and uh, there is a sort of hidden reference that everybody is from the east and then the and so on the, the, that media uh, is playing a, a great role in uh, putting that image that terrorism comes only from the middle east and especially from arabs or uh, this is part of the what what dr mona highlighted today in her lecture i i see that uh, very clear um, so um yes whatever uh, is happening around us nowadays war can uh, uh happen uh, just through media they don't need to send an army they don't need to 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 lose guys and to lose soldiers and c collateral damage would be only uh, uh by the people who are invaded not by the the armies because and of course iraqis will lose because uh, um it's only uh, yani just show the the american flag and with the whole propaganda and everything, and everybody will sit at home believing that we are uh, being controlled by the American army. So uh, I think... Well, yeah, I think yeah. that's... Uh, sorry to interrupt you. I think that's what Baudrillard is trying to say. Yes, and yes, the definitely. Not, this is why I said it's not, this is the, yeah. It's only a comment. That's, yeah. that's, why, that's why he believes it wasn't a war and mm -hmm. that it that did not really take place. Exactly. Thank you. Exactly. So it was Thank only a comment. Thank you very much for this lecture, Dr. Mana. I'm uh, honored to be one of your Thank students. Thank you. Thanks to you and to the department and uh, to your dean. And uh, thanks to Dr. Alia for her great efforts in helping me prepare. No uh, worries. It's live. Thank you so much, all of you. Thank you. And thank, I, I thank all those who are, who are present or who really uh, uh, attended this uh, presentation. I'm grateful to everybody and God bless you all. Uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Mona, we do have uh, some other questions if you have time. I don't uh, know. What, are you ready? Uh, actually, uh, what time is it now? Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. I can have a couple of questions. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, thank you, yeah. Professor uh, Dr. Sana. Thank you so much. We will move uh, to uh, 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 Mr. Karar uh, Karar Isa. Thank you very much, Professor Alia. Thank you very much, for me, Professor Mona, for this insightful and informative session. And thanks for Professor Sana for preparing this. I just want to ask uh, Professor Mona about her opinion. If we can apply Baudrillard theory about uh, theory of simulacra and uh, simulation concerning our war with ISIS. Because Professor, as, as we know, that the, the, the cities were invaded through images before they were actually invaded on, on land. And as, as you know that Baudrillard, as a cultural semiotician, he tries to show that the power of the signifier is more compelling and the prevailing than the reality of this signified. And this is, in fact, from the Caesarian uh, point of view. Okay, absolutely. Yeah. So I just want to ask you, do you agree that our war with ISIS is also a, a war of simulacra rather than a war which actually happened? Because, because sorry, because according to Chomsky, that, that the war uh, which happened in the and in the in the Gulf, it wasn't it, it wasn't real a war. It was just a, a you know striking through airplanes and that's it. So do, do uh, you agree with this about ISIS war? Uh, this is really difficult to to answer, but uh, I have just one thing to say: that the whole ISIS business has prepared in advance, and we all know, and all the world knows about it. So, um, but um, whether we call it simulacra or not, because so many things happened, uh, uh, truly happened, the calamities, the disasters, what happened to the EZD women and all this, it's horrifying and horrible. And um, it, it is, I don't, I don't feel like a simulation and simulacra to this 
particular event. It's too complicated and too emotional for all of us, actually, to kind of give these judgments on it. I Maybe I should think about it. But um, thank you so much for this um, uh, question. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. We, uh, we will have a couple of more questions, Mr. Adil and uh, Dr. Ammar. Uh, please, Mr. Adil, go ahead, and then we will finish with uh, Dr. Ammar. Mr. Adil? Okay, assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam. It's my uh, lucky day to have uh, been uh, a co host, though I did not do anything until now. Uh, Dr. Ali, I did everything uh, no, successfully you've, you've, and perfectly. You've, 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 you've my done a lot. Is, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Ali is my student and my friends. Yeah. Sorry, I kind of uh, worked with her. For, I mean, I've been working with um, her. <laughs> but thank you so much, Adil. This, thank you so much. This is what I'm missing. I'm not. Too, I have not been here. Next student. time, next time, I'll work with uh, you. Yes. Uh, my question is: uh, I think it's clear that an individual. In, I will, inshallah. Uh, uh, the the comment or the question is: uh, It's clear that the individual in postmodern world represents others, not mm -hmm. himself. Mm -hmm. That is in his opinions and his ideas, contentions, and even reactions to the environment. Mm -hmm. uh, the question is, um, is it a healthy sign or a sign of unity of the society that we represent one idea? Can, can, uh, I mean, can, can, is, can it, you um, the is the media successful in convincing us that uh, uh, baby, you know yeah, the voice. It, uh, no, my my the question voice, is that uh, the, uh, voice, the media the has voice, the voice comes and goes, and I I can't I can't follow you. It just uh, yeah. the voice is interrupted every now and then. I just I don't feel I am following you. Could you please repeat, Mr. Adel, so that I can I can mm -hmm. clarify to Professor Mona? Uh, so, uh, should I repeat the question? Yes, okay. please. Thank you. Uh, to start with, uh, it's clear that the individual in the postmodern Yes, in the postmodern world, represents uh, others, not uh -huh. himself. That is, much of others, not of himself, in his ideas, opinions, etc. Uh, can we consider that a sign of uh, unity of the society, that we all represent one idea? Can we say that the other is successful in convincing us that with one idea, one image, that we come to one uh, consensus uh, over one, one opinion, one image, that the war did not happen? Uh -huh. Most people or some people were convinced or believed in that. Can you say it is a healthy sign to get people to agree up over one point? Achieve unity. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. You yes. mean, you mean, you mean the, are you referring to Baudrillard as his own vision and this is his only vision, not everybody's vision? Do you mean well, that? Well, uh, we can apply it to our... I mean, this is his vision. This is his vision, right. and it is, it's it, this is his vision. Uh, but it's up to us to take it or refuse it. For me, I find so much truth in what he says. Uh, if I, I, I look at at our daily life today, and I I know what's mm. happening in the world today, and how we ourselves uh, sometimes are actually, uh, you know, uh, we do forget ourselves sometimes in in this media culture. So I feel there is so much truth in it. Uh, but of course, uh, it, it, it remains up to the individual to agree or disagree with the author or with the with the vision that he presents. So, uh, is that what you meant? Because that's how I understood your your comment. Well, thank you very much. Thank uh, you, Dr. Ammar Shamil. Go ahead. Dr. Ammar has prepared a poem, a very beautiful poem, uh, Professor okay. Muna. And, okay. uh, and it's, uh, it's on my laptop uh, right now, but I think she... You know, think... you, know, you know, Dr. Ammar is, I know he's such a loyal friend. He is so grateful to, for our friendships. And um, I, I really respect him. But uh, um, when he talks uh, so highly of me, I feel so embarrassed. So... I think he has a question right now. The poem is with okay, me, but I think he has a question. <laughs> okay, Dr. Amar, a question. Okay, but any uh, verses, please give them to me directly, not in public. <laughs> 
I will, I will pass them to you. Don't worry. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Dr. Amar, please. Here I am. All ears. All ears. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, doctor, for this illuminating notes. And I consider it a bliss uh, to be uh, with you uh, this day. Okay. Uh, I like just I have a little comment on George Bush, the son, when he came to invade Iraq. Okay, yeah. because as you know, America is a major Protestant and they, they are a strong supporter of Israel and uh, they believe in big Israel. Okay, anyone, any enemy for Israel, okay, they want to, to be um, against him. So uh, George Bush put the, 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 the portrait or the picture, uh, picture of Jesus Christ behind him and he said that, uh, that he's, he is going on a sacred mission in order to, uh, to just like when John the Baptist paved the way for Christ to come, when he pre prepared the minds of people. So he mm -hmm. said, I'm preparing the way for big Israel, because as we know, after the erection of big Israel, there will be the second coming of Christ. So okay. he gave uh, some kind of a relig religious touch for uh, for uh, to give uh, some kind of uh, okay legislation to his invasion of Iraq okay so okay. They, they are not only uh, make use of media they are also make use of everything even religion and beliefs and such things okay ah uh, this is your comment okay um I agree with you because uh, something that probably I missed saying in my presentation is that. Uh, for Baudrillard, even ideology goes under the the umbrella of simulation and simulacra. So uh, whatever ideology he presented is definitely prepared and edited and, and, and uh, definitely prepared for this purpose. So all ideologies nowadays, they hide the truth. They definitely, let us say most ideologies, or all ideology itself is a system of thought um, uh, and ideas that's mostly hides the truth behind it. So, um, yes, um, this uh, Bush's ideological speeches or whatever he said uh, is definitely, uh, it definitely goes under the umbrella of simulation as well. Thank you, Ammar. Thank you, Dr. Ammar. Uh, Dr. Mona, we do have a couple of people to asking questions. If you have time, I can pass them to you. If not... Uh, oh, okay. Only, I... only a couple, I promise. Only a couple. Uh, Mr. Salah, <laughs> go ahead. I, I appreciate your interest in my presentation this is really uh i feel grateful thank you very it, much it is interesting it is interesting mr salah go ahead salah ibrahim yes thank you very much thank you no. uh, uh, yeah i am an honor how to see and uh, i i was one of your students back in the beginning of the 90s <laughs> you brought us in touch with uh, literature english literature and culture and mm -hmm. i'm very grateful you even were a, a member of the discussion committee of my ma thesis back in Honor. 1996 Honor. thank you very much thank you really mm -hmm. uh, my my only question is uh, how do you evaluate the work of the Iraqi mass media versus the American mass media in light of this theory of this uh, that we discussed today. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, um, I feel embarrassed to know that I know um, little about Iraqi media and I don't think they really can um, um, uh, compete with uh, American media, no way. Uh, so we really lack good media presentation. I do feel that we need very good media presentation that would counter plant uh, the, uh, the American media. So maybe I should, from now on, I should be watching um, more Iraqi media news and you know Iraqi uh, channels to get to know uh, whether or not they are really doing their duty to kind of create um, a, a kind of, uh, you know, good presentation, not representation, but presentation of our reality. So whether there is um, uh, simulation in Iraqi media or not, this is a question that needs to be um, uh, thought about and that needs to be explored. Thank you so much, Dr. Salah. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. And, and then we will have a question from uh, Mr. Mustafa Abbas. Go ahead, please, Mr. Mustafa. Mr. Mustafa. Oh, 
Okay, uh, maybe I will steal his turn and ask my own question for you, Dr. Mona, please, Professor okay. Mona. Uh, throughout uh, working on uh, Baudrillard's theory and, and uh, the idea of uh, how he actually uh, announced that we are living in a hyper-reality, uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't think none of them, yani none of the uh, Western philosopher, philosophers who try to kind of theorize about about what happened in Iraq during the wars and after after uh, the, the math after war after the war none of them has actually lived this this uh, uh, atrocity but we lived it don't you think that uh, the the idea of hyper reality or the simulation simulation and simulacra is, is another level of of denying rea reality they are kind of a Building up another an, a new level that can cover the the actual life that we are living. Uh, are you talking about uh, uh, on the part of the West? Uh, yes, on yes, the on the part of the Western theorists. Uh, so, what do you mean? You mean uh, uh, are they? Uh, are uh, I, 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 I don't know. I've, you know, because I live in America, and mm -hmm. I know that. Uh, when you talk to the American people, uh, they they really don't know much about us. All they know, all they get is what they have on on their you know on their channels uh, in the media. And so you need uh, here our mission here in, in in the West. We have to kind of keep talking about us. We have to show them uh, even our uh, the way we behave with them, the way we act. It's it's all like you know uh, it's like a mission on our part and. Um, um, uh, yes, they they have their own way of looking at us because they don't know. They need to be exposed to the outer outer world. Yes. But mm -hmm. the problem in the American society is uh, the majority of people uh, only hear what they are given. So and what they are given is usually prepared and edited and mm -hmm. and all this. So they don't really have a glimpse of the truth. That's, that's what I have experienced. And that's why, you know, whenever we have a chance, we always talk. We, we sometimes attend, uh, you know, like uh, gatherings and talk about uh, uh, our vision of, uh, or our, our image of, of, of Iraq and the Middle East, what is happening there. And uh, many of them get so interested in this. So mm -hmm. again, as I said, and we have to do more. We have to work more on this issue. Well, the reason of the reason of my question is that because of one of one of the plays that I've uh, I've worked on before and 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 criticized and work uh, and actually uh, prepared a paper and included in my my PhD it was entitled "The Gulf Between Us" and it was written by uh, Trevor Griffiths, a uh, British writer. And mm -hmm. in, in the introduction of the play, he says that he was in Washington when the war broke. And he used to watch the war on TV, on the CNN, exactly as Baudrillard has described. And mm -hmm. he said that he felt that as if what is happening on the screen is from another time, not not their actual. Yeah. They, were, they were exactly, mm -hmm. and that's why he came up with the with the play, the 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 gulf between us, when he kind of pictured or portrayed uh, 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 some faraway land, as he said in quotation marks, faraway land where Arabs and, and Westerns are to uh, work or with, with each other or against each other uh, until the end of the play. And that's why I, I had this idea that it's that's another true. level of, of denying reality, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with you, and that uh, seems to be a very interesting play. I look forward to reading it, or you, you will Definitely. help me. You know, of course, of course I will. Uh, yes, we so much there is a big gulf. There is, is a big divide. There is a big divide. And uh, how can we bridge this divide? That's the question. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have another time for, for Maysoon? Because Dr. Maysoon has raised her hand just now. Uh, well, yeah, one more, one more question. Uh, Dr. Maysoon, go ahead. And you have the privilege of knowing the Professor Mona. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, first, thank you so much, Dr. Mona, for such an interesting, informative uh, presentation. Do you hear me, please? Yes, I am. Uh, yes, I of course. Go ahead. Dr. Mona, uh, what I did understand from, from your representation is that, that simulation almost is dead now. Because as Aristotle says, simulation is the imitation of a real world. And what no, comes no, now no, is... No, simulation no, simulation simulation is not that. Reality, is dead. reality is dead, not simulation. Okay, yani the, but but, but, but yeah, sorry. Yeah, 
Yeah, in the postmodern period, that's what Baudrillard is saying. That's what we have been talking about. Um, um, the uh, simulation is now controlling the world. Simulacra and simulation, and, uh, which is definitely media, uh, media culture, is, is, is really predominant now. And then uh, in this, the world of reality is disintegrating. It's disappearing. That's, that's the whole thing. But Sorry, but simulacra is dominated more than simulation because, as you as you said, that simulacra no, but, is, but, 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 uh, is uh, copying what is not original no, and it's, giving it's, it. I I just want I said something. I said the dictionary yeah. will give you probably a slight difference in the meanings of simulacra and simulation, but uh, for Baudrillard he uses them interchangeably. They are the same. Mm -hmm. So he sometimes uses simulation. Sometimes he uses simulacra. Like for him, it's one word. So from here, I I was speaking. I mean, Confusing. this is the point. Yeah, really it's confusing. confusing. It's yeah. not confusing. If you go back yeah. to the dictionary meaning, they are very similar. There's just a slight difference. So, like when we say simulation is represent, it's a fake representation of of, of reality, while simulacra is, is, is again copies of it. So it's almost the same. But uh, but no, no yeah. simulacra. Sorry, but simulacra no, no. is. Uh, I know. Copy, I know. Not I know. original. I think which has no reality. Yeah, no. Uh, they create simulacra, no, no. simulacra, as I defined it, as he defined it, is either mm -hmm. it's a copy of, uh, of, uh, of no original, which has no origin, or no longer has the original. So this is both meanings. So mm. in that, in that, in that, in, in that, in this way, um, uh, reality was there but the simulacra has definitely controlled it and so the original has disappeared so i get two meanings if you go back thank to you. the word simulacra That's so that's how it is thank you so much for your presentation thank you're you so much welcome. again you're welcome thank, thank you everybody great and huge thanks and you're gratitude welcome. to professor mona for for this insightful uh, presentation uh, before i finish i just uh, would like to open the floor to dr sana the head of the department in the college of arts university of baghdad if she has anything to to finish the the, the session with professor uh, dr sana please go ahead well um, nobody can speak when dr mona alwan starts talking and definitely, definitely, I'm honored today by her uh, being uh, uh, our guest. Thank you very much, Dr. Munal Alwan, uh, for such an informative and uh, important lecture. Uh, thank you, Alia, and thanks, uh, Dr. Adil, as well. And everybody, uh, thank you very much for being with us. Uh, Dr. Mona, I'm not going to be convinced with one lecture. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> Definitely, I need more. I need more. And uh, we, uh, your students, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure everybody. Allah. We can't have enough of you. Allah. We cannot Allah. have enough of you. Yes. Thank you so much, all of you, all. Uh, uh, President, thank you so much. I'm so grateful to you and your, I'm grateful to your wonderful uh, questions. I'm grateful for your interest, um, uh, you know, in, in, in my presentation. I'm so happy I offered something useful and thought provoking. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, everyone. Have a lovely good night and beautiful mm -hmm. and peaceful and healthy uh, weekend and good night to all. Thanks for you.